Don't tell the others, and I mean this wholeheartedly, but you two are my favorite part of this series, especially this season. I'm so pulled into their individual and mutual agendas, their language, so I, I had to at least mention that at the start. Oh, so, thank you. Thank I you. appreciate that. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Did you see the second season? I have, yes, all, all of it. it. Okay, yeah. cool, cool. That'll yeah. be a fun conversation. Cool. Yeah. So, so first, uh, I wanted to talk about their language. Uh, Lee, I love how thoughtful and Shakespearean Day is with his language. He'll drop some wisdom about existence, and then he'll say something like, can someone get me a, a damn blasted robe so my hand, my manhood isn't flapping around? So I'm curious what it's like to navigate Day's language and casualize it. Well, I mean, I, I, I feel like with this Cleon in particular, um, I think he's eccentric. I think he's an individual. I think he, I think he, he doesn't want to follow the clone rules. Like he, he looks at his brothers and he's like, I'm just not like you. I don't, I don't even, I don't like you. You irritate mm -hmm. me. And I don't want to follow this program that has been uh, put out before me. I, I'm not interested in it. I think he wants to write his own uh, destiny. And yeah. he does, and I and I find that I, really interesting about him. And with that as kind of the starting point of the character, his individuality, the language becomes a fun thing. The language becomes a thing to play with. The way he expresses himself, because he's not following the program. So, so uh, speaking of all of what you just mentioned about how Day is kind of pushing against what's been set out for his journey. I remember us talking last year and you were saying that what's interesting about him in that particular season is that they that he's trying to hold on to an imperishable permanence. And so how how did you feel like stepping into this new season? I guess both of you that there's they're kind of embracing change more so, but they're also kind of embracing it in such a way where they can have their own control. Well, I would say that, yeah, my character is, is embracing change. He's, he, he looks at the prophecy that Harry Seldon uh, made in the throne room generations ago, you know, over a century ago. Um, and he sees a solution in the marriage. Um, and I think he also, he, he has the Cleon ego. He has that sense of, I can do anything. I can, I am unbeatable. I am unstoppable. I'm the emperor of the galaxy for a reason, because you, you can't take me down. Um, so he, he, he moves into, into this, um, uh, you know, independent thinking with that kind of energy. Um, I would say that, like, for, yeah. Yeah, for her, the change is something she will fight against. You know, she's it, she has her mission, and and her mission is to protect the genetic dynasty. So this idea of of marrying this woman and having kids and ending the gen, uh, genetic dynasty is a major threat, and she will not allow that to happen. She will so. And, and kind of, and I think kind of the further we go in the, uh, because she's always like, she's always known them inside out. She's always known all of the, the Cleon secrets. She's raised them. She's taught them everything they know. She even controls their memories. But by the mm. end of the season, we kind of like, she also learns that there are things that are, are out of her control. And the, the, I think it shakes her to the core of understanding that this, this mission might be impossible, but that there are like, too many threats threats inside out and outside and kind of like I, I i think yeah it's it's not an easy place where she ends up also throughout mm -hmm. this season right right so with demersal I, I love how there's this history between her and day that can truly be felt I, I i think of a there's like probably no greater illustration than the scene when day is absolutely livid and he asks your character how long she expected his outburst to last. And you're like, you came under a minute and a quarter. So it was really funny, but uh, really informative too. Like, obviously there are the words there, but how did you both work together to create that history? Because that's part of my interest and in why I like uh, y'all's part of the this particular narrative is because it's even when y'all are not even talking, but y'all are looking at each other from across the room or at the table, and I just feel like there's so much clicking within my head without being said. Mm, lovely, yeah. Yeah, well, I think that I mean, what Cleon feels towards her, and they, they've got 
two very different perspectives on this. I mean, I think Cleon thinks I'm me, so there's no human on earth who would be an appropriate partner for me. Uh, the partner that I want is this exquisite antique robot. This is the only thing that that would be. Um, and also he feels uh, an incredible amount of intimacy with her. He feels her support, um, her support, her um, nurturing gave him this confidence in himself right. um, to, to, to take on the responsibilities that he inherited. So um, I think he feels like this is his soulmate. Mm -hmm. And physically, um, once they began, you know, being intimate with each other, he physically feels compatible with only her. Yeah. You know? And I, so you can make what conclusions mm -hmm. you want from that, but that's because it, she's not, you know, it's not someone he just met. This is someone who raised him. You know, and, and we talked about we talked about a lot about the intimacy between them and kind of like the I think it's exactly the scene that you're talking about when they're kind of like looking at the mural together before he has this rant. And we were I remember us doing that and kind of like exploring the moment of because there, we see them so often kind of like in conflict or kind of like fighting mm -hmm. for the last word or fighting for the right decision or kind of like mm -hmm. punishing each other. But kind of like that also that they share something together that like we talked about marriage we talked about like being mm -hmm. in a relationship kind of also mm -hmm. feeling powerful together and kind of like being there for each other so i think yeah it, it's but because you've seen where the season goes it becomes clear later on that that was that was an emotion that the machine was cultivating in him so that she could control him sure. you know and i think once he once he realizes that, I think it is it is a moment that absolutely unhinges him. Mm. You know, yeah. it makes him um, go to a primitive part of himself. Mm -hmm. And she's, uh -oh. I don't, there's no one who's more loyal than she is because of her programming also, but the, her loyal, loyalty lies to Cleon the first and his ideas more than any of these, even though they like they like he feels like Clay on the 18th feels that there's this trust and all of that. But but in the end, she only like her loyalty goes to Clay on the first and the idea of prote uh, protecting the genetic dynasty. I'm sorry. It it's, was, it's an it interesting was, like tangle the relationship, like yeah. who is enslaving who, who uh, is a robot capable of feeling love or is that um, an affect, a very sophisticated affect of their programming, um, um, is it, you know, I, it's 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 the show kind of gives out riddles like that. It it yeah. puts out these thought experiments without giving you the answer. Mm. It, it, it's the, I think that's one of the fun pleasures of the show is kind of creating these like um, riddles, these puzzles. For the audience to kind of untangle and follow through the story is a clone more human than an android the artificial intelligence is like is there more human dignity in a, in a clone than like and who gets to decide that they're more worthy mm -hmm. or how do we define humanity right. or our soul all these questions I, yeah it's it's very intriguing it's it was a lot of fun to to yeah. dig into that